In the aftermath of the First World War, there was chaos on the streets of Germany. Rival political groups vied for control. Challenges came from the left and the right of the political spectrum. Politicians were not safe to walk the streets. Walter Rathenau, a leading member of the Treaty of Versailles signing delegation, was assassinated in 1922. At this time, with violence and turmoil all around, the Weimar Republic was vying for its very existence. At the end of the First World War, Germany was on its knees. The political, social and economic forces that had pressed in on the German state before the war exploded in its aftermath. The Weimar Republic was birthed in an incomplete revolution, which saw the elite and the army retain power within the country. The constitution that was created had significant flaws. Article 48 allowed for the potential dictatorship of an individual or group in the future. Furthermore, the proportional representation system that was used for the parliamentary democracy meant that multiple parties and coalition governments were very likely, which would make effective government in the future difficult. All of this and the political turmoil that surrounded the Weimar Republic would have been difficult enough to deal with, but was compounded by the Treaty of Versailles. This dictated peace was forced upon Germany by the Allies. It stripped Germany of land. It reduced its population. It forced the Germans to admit responsibility as the sole cause of the war. It also imposed crippling reparations on an already damaged economy. The birth of the Weimar Republic was a period of extreme stress and strain for Germany. The Treaty of Versailles was undoubtedly at the very heart of the problems that the Weimar Republic faced from 1918 to 23. It was this treaty more than anything that caused tremendous political and economic problems for the Weimar Republic, not only in this early period, but also throughout the rest of the 1920s. The threat to the Weimar Republic from the left of the political spectrum came from the Spartacists in January of 1919 an uprising of communists in an attempt to create a Soviet-style revolution in Germany. It was only with the help of the army that Ebert, the leader of the Weimar Republic, was able to put down this attempted revolution. Two years later, in 1920, Wolfgang Kapp, an ex freikorps officer, forced the government of the Weimar Republic out of Berlin. They had to flee to Dresden as he attempted a right-wing coup of the Weimar Republic. This was only put down as the people of Berlin went on strike, showing their support for Ebert's government rather than the army. Then in 1923, the French invaded the Ruhr to take back industrial materials as the Germans were failing to pay the requisite amount of reparations. The government called on the workers to go on strike but continued to pay them. Passive resistance, as it was known, led to massive hyperinflation, where the value of the German currency became worthless. When you're revising this period, it's really important that you understand the chronology of events. Make sure that you know when each particular uprising happened. Make sure you understand how each event links together. The type of question that you're most likely to be asked is going to focus on what was the biggest threat to the Weimar Republic, or whether one threat was more important than another. You might also consider how the Weimar Republic survived this period despite the many problems that it had. The period 1924 to 1928 can be seen as the golden years of the Weimar Republic. Firstly, the hyperinflation crisis was solved with the scrapping of the old currency and the release of a new. It was Gustav Stresemann, who was Chancellor for nine months in 1923, who was the architect of this plan. Stresemann was then Foreign Minister for the rest of this period. It can be seen as golden because the German economy began to improve. Industrial production increased. The political situation began to settle down, with parties supportive of democracy in the ascendancy. A lot of this improvement was down to the Dawes Act of 1924. This saw 
a flood of American investment into the German economy. Stresemann, as foreign minister during this time, was key in rebuilding the relationship with the rest of Europe. He agreed settled borders with the French and other allies of the First World War. In 1926, Germany was able to join the League of Nations, the organisation that they had been banned from from its inception. Stresemann also renegotiated the reparation payments that Germany had to pay as part of the Treaty of Versailles. As well as this period being golden because of political and economic changes and greater stability, there was also greater cultural experimentation. Berlin became the centre of this explosion of new culture, music and the liberal arts. Women were more liberated as 1920s feminism impacted on the Weimar Republic. Although many people enjoyed this greater cultural freedom of expression, there were also critics who saw this as a diversion, as a break away from traditional German values. The Nazis in particular were very critical of this greater cultural experimentation. It's really important when you're looking at this period that you consider how golden the golden years were. On the surface, things seem to be getting a lot better politically, economically, the greater cultural expression. However, underneath that surface, there were some problems that existed, problems that continued from the period 23 to 28. You need to consider how far this really was an improvement for the Weimar Republic and how far this was actually something that was hiding the underlying problems that still existed. Focus on the role of Stresemann, consider how important he as a person actually was in this period, but also consider how people criticised him as well as how people supported his policies. In the autumn of 1929, the American economy imploded as the Wall Street crash gripped financial markets. The ripples of this financial crisis were felt heavily in Germany as American investors called in their loans and German banks struggled to stay open. This was a massive economic problem for the Weimar Republic and led to a huge depression during which six million people were unemployed. If you were a student or young person between the age of 18 and 24, there was a 40% chance that there would be no job available for you in the German economy. Thousands upon thousands of Germans relied on welfare and some form of help from the government. However, fearful of another hyperinflation crisis, the likes of which the Weimar Republic had suffered in 1923, the government chose a laissez-faire approach to economic policy. The Chancellor, Heinrich Brüning, was nicknamed the Hunger Chancellor as his policies were largely seen as responsible for exacerbating the problems of the economic depression. Furthermore, the political system began to creak under the pressure of this economic financial meltdown. The government struggled to pass legislation through the Reichstag and increasingly relied on Article 48 to force through measures to try and improve the economic situation. Numerous coalition governments were formed and then collapsed. During this period, the Nazi Party and the Communists, two parties committed to destroying democracy, saw their popular vote increase year on year. Something troubling was happening to the Weimar Republic. Democracy was beginning to come apart at the seams. And this financial crisis, this economic meltdown that made the credit crunch of 2008, for example, look like a mere financial blip in comparison, was beginning to pull Weimar democracy apart. And it was this that would eventually lead to the rise of the Nazi party and the destruction of the Weimar Republic.
period from 1929 to 1932 saw tremendous political and economic pressures placed upon the Weimar Republic. Pressures that ultimately it was not able to withstand. In many ways, democracy in Germany at this time was like a staked tree, a young fledgling whose roots had not grown deep enough since 1918. So that when the violent winds of political and economic change came, the tree blew over. In other words, democracy collapsed and along with it, the Weimar Republic went, replaced by a new, darker time where the Nazis were able to establish a dictatorship and the Third Reich was born. When you're revising this period, it's really important that you consider how the economic problems that the Weimar Republic had impacted politically. Look closely at how the government changed in the period from 1932 to 1933. Look at how many different types of governments there were how many different coalition groups, who was controlling the government in the period 32 to 33. Consider the importance of Hindenburg, who had the ultimate decision to appoint and remove chancellors. Consider also how much Article 48 was being used in order to pass legislation. In this sense, a lot of the unravelling of Weimar democracy happened before Hitler was actually appointed chancellor.